Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, once again, I have the pleasure of bringing you guys someone who, who actually knows what he's talking about. I'm not just bringing one of my friends on here, but I'm bringing <laughs> you the boy, Jim Getz. Jim, how you doing? I'm doing amazing. Yourself? I'm doing pretty good. I actually, but I've had such a long day today. And I and I woke up just for this again because I'm <laughs> you, you know and you know and you know it's crazy you know this quarantine kind of just threw off my entire like sleeping schedule so I've been like sleeping like at random times, um, but Jim can you give me a much more um, brightful detail of who you are? Sure. Um, right now I own, operate, and run a company called Functionized. So we take human performance to the next level. We use advanced techniques, advanced technology, and make it so time efficient. I mean, my background's been in strength and conditioning. I've been with the uh, Toronto Blue Jays, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I've worked with pro athletes uh, across the globe. And I understand that our idea of hours and hours and hours a day. And I've been able to take all the research and condense it so individuals can actually have a life. You're not doing two hours to four hours a day of working on yourself, 15, 20 minutes, you're in, you're out, and you're moving on with life. And it's something that developed over some time and absolutely loving it. That, that sounds like a lot, actually. Um, um, now, you know, talk to me about this um, sex pyramid, well, sex timing pyramid. And, you know, after, you know, after we go, I'm going to have a few questions because I know, I know the guys that listen to this, you know, they, mm -hmm. we, have, we have these... Uh, these, I guess these street tricks that can help us with timing. <laughs> but I want I want to see if these if any of these tricks kind of fall in your period somewhere somehow. Sure. Let me get into it a little bit so everyone can kind of understand. I mean, I, I myself, I mean it sounds kind of crazy. Back in what sixth, seventh grade, I started buying men's health magazines. I just want to be like the Mac Dad, the best of the best of the best for the day. You know, I finally even kissed a girl. I hadn't even done that yet. But once I get past that phase, I wanted to just be the one where the woman, like, the best orgasms ever. I wanted to, every woman to just be, they can't get enough of me. You know, like, just be the biggest playboy ever. But I didn't even know what being a playboy was back then. So I'd research and research, you know, what's the best things to eat, um, how to try to grow and make yourself bigger. Um, I've done all of that. <laughs> uh, we all have, right? We're guys. <laughs> but when it really comes down to it, understanding the physiology of a guy, what boosts testosterone, what um, helps you last longer, uh, what gives you the most bang for the buck, really comes down to energy levels. Uh, when we're younger, in our early 20s, I mean, we just keep going and going and going and going, and there's no stopping us, um, at least I hope not. I mean, you know, all right, time number seven, all right, where's number eight? I just had a pizza, let's keep on going. <laughs> then you get, you, you know, in your 30s, and towards your 40s, and then I hear stories about guys in the 50s and 60s, and it just tanks, absolutely drops. When we're younger, we got so much more energy. I mean, we're literally designed at the primal level to fight or flight, get away, or beat the crap out of some type of being, the saber-toothed tiger coming to get us, to feed and eat, because, well, if we don't eat, we die, and to, you know, the other F. <laughs> yeah, the point <laughs> <laughs> Those are the three things that we're designed to do. And if we are giving too much energy to one or the other, we don't have enough energy for that last most fun one, and that's procreation. And even after we've procreated, well, we like to keep practicing, right? Exactly. It's, 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 it's all, it all takes practice to get there. So you don't, we don't want to make sure we don't rush the process. We want to make sure we do it right. Exactly. Now, a craving is a craving. And a craving can be good, and a craving can be bad. You, you crave enough Breyers ice cream. I'm not picking on Breyers. I just used to like Breyers ice cream. <laughs> and you can grow your belly pretty big with all these cravings. Yes. You can crave things and then master it. Whereas you are, it, it's more like hyper-focus. So if you're hyper-focused on eating, for instance, you're going to get really good at that. If you're hyper-focused on using all your energy, though, to be banging other hot girls, then that's where your energy is going to go at the same time. So, uh, so, so just a question now, right? I know there was a point that I was very uh, focused on my sexual performance, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
and, and it was good and I was doing great, but then it was just kind of like my energy went elsewhere. Right. But I didn't really change anything. I just felt like I was just less focused on it, but my, just because my energy changed somewhere else, my performance changed as well. Even though I didn't feel like anything had changed only beside the focus. Does oh, that, does that relate to like what you're saying? Well, you're talking about like right after, or are you talking about just in general? With in, gen girls? in general, in general, in general. In general with girls, but I've also, I mean, yes, it, it does change. And I found, especially guys in business, where <laughs> you're in your 20s, you're playing sports, whatever it is, you're banging everything pretty that goes by. And then all of a sudden, one day you decide, you know, I'm mean, let me take that focus, and let me hyper focus on making a bigger bank account. I want a bigger house. I want a, an island, you know, whatever it may be. And that energy, I mean, we've only got so much energy. So in your case there, when you're not focusing on it so much, you've got other interests. And you've kind of been there, done that. You've been desensitized to the really super hot girl. Not to say that another attractive person coming by is not going to catch your eye. Um, sometimes may even catch your eye even more. But your entire life now is not dedicated like we are in our late teens and 20s to be just... That's it. I mean, we want to we want to be the animal in the bedroom. Exactly, and we really are animals. We really are very primal in nature. Even you know, guys that get married. Oh my goodness, you meet this beautiful woman, and that's all you do all day, all night. You're just with her, and then you get married. You have some kids, and the average couple gets together three times a month. Is the actual number. Three, three times th a month. It used to be like hold on, hold on, time hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Jim, 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 you just you just said something that <laughs> that is pretty quite serious. You're telling me that the average couple that mm -hmm. is married has three sex sessions a month. That's it. That's not even once a week. It's not even once a week. Well, she's got to take one week off for certain reasons, and then uh, you know you got three weeks of good That's time. One it, okay, so still, you're still you're, you're, what you're telling me is one out of seven days it, yep. it's on, on a good end. When we used to be going like three times before breakfast, right? Wow. Yeah. A lot of that has to do with, again, that focus. I mean, when it comes to couples, they often get so complacent in what they're doing in life. Let's go see their friends, kids, that they're not focused on each other anymore. So when they actually, are, they let their bodies go. I mean, when you meet, typically the girls are the hottest, the guys are the best looking, so they go crazy on each other. They start to lose it, eating all that ice cream, focusing on all these other things. They lose interest in each other, they let each other go, or themselves go, I should say. And what happens? They're not as attracted to each other anymore. So, yeah, once every seven days, and there you go. That's about it. Sad. But that, so sounds like, that does not motivate me to want to get married, by the way. That, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that just told me, you know what, maybe I should stay on this single life. Let me tell you, I mean, no disrespect to my wife here. We've been together for 20 <laughs> years now. 20 years. I met her on her first day of undergrad. We are not the norm. <laughs> okay, that's, okay, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That sounds like a happy marriage. I'm very happy. We work on ourselves daily for each other and uh, uh, most attractive woman I've ever seen. So That's just something I'm happy for you. Thank you. Now, Napoleon Hill, the yeah, Think and Grow Rich guy, he would often talk about, you know, again, focus. You know, what are we focusing on here? You know, athletes typically have routines before competition. And the same thing, the energy goes to sex. What is our routine before sex? Oftentimes it's, well, drinking, going out. Um, you know, where is that energy actually going? The women, on the other hand, you know, guys, we have to match up with the women. So here's where charting a cycle may go. <laughs> a six through 12, the women are going through ovulation. So those six through 12, she is the most ready to go. She wants to subconsciously, primarily, be with the guy so she can procreate. Now, yeah, most girls now, they're, they don't want to procreate. And yeah, just going out and hooking up with a girl, we don't want to just procreate with somebody random. I get that. But for the whole idea of mating and having sex with somebody, that day six through 12, especially for guys, is that open window of here's your best shot with a girl. Just from that. Okay, let's, re, re, let's, get, let's get back to this. So you said day six through 12. Yep. 
is the best day for you to have a chance with a guy and a girl for both to meet? Yep, the girl's looking for a guy. She's looking for a stud to breed. I mean, this is just getting primal here. Interesting, muy interesante. <laughs> <laughs> um, the women, the best opportunity to have with a woman is for her to know that the guy is both dependable and safe. She doesn't want typically, again, going to this primal aspect, a wild, crazy guy that is dangerous. She could get hurt. He's just gonna hit and run, if you would. Um, the best chance is if she feels comfortable, even if it's at a, a meet and greet session, you know, going out and about, being at somebody's party. The guy that talks to her and actually listens, all of a sudden she starts to feel that comfort. Now, you add that comfort level to day six through 12, and the guy's chances are going up and up and up and up and up. She is going to end up releasing estrogen because she feels cared for. When her estrogen goes up, guy's chances again, going straight up. And uh, when a guy actually subconsciously makes a woman's needs feel met, believe it or not, his testosterone actually starts to go up as well. So now we're starting to create the perfect storm of getting together. The perfect, the perfect combination. Exactly. Interesting. Exactly. Testosterone goes up, estrogen goes up, bada boom, bada bing. Everyone's having a good time. Yeah, it's an amazing time. Um, when a woman also feels the most desirable, she's going to have her best orgasm. When a woman just is with some guy, I just hooked up, I got drunk, what the hell happened? Her orgasms, if, if she was actually able to rate her orgasms, I mean, that, that would be kind of fun, like, before you leave in the morning, you know, can you rate your orgasm for me on a scale of one to ten? <laughs> <laughs> no, you, 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 know, it's, you know, it's funny, right? So, like, I, I'm not sure when I had this conversation or where I had it. I know we were talking about this conversation, right? And then there's actually guys who actually ask, like, oh, uh, did you come? Or, you know, how was your orgasm? I, I've never had the guts to like ask, right? Because, you know, this is my thing. Like I've always, I've, I'm a strong believer that, you know, you know, whatever your performance was, like you need to own, own it to it, right? And as a man, mm -hmm. I, I, know, I know when I performed well and I know when I had a bad performance. And if I know that I, I performed well, I'm not even going to ask. I'm like, listen, this, that was the best I could have given you. I'm sorry, <laughs> if it, I'm sorry if it didn't meet the standard, but that was the best I could give you, right? So when you said that, I find it really funny that, you know, you'd be like, you know, in the morning, he's like, can you rate that one through 10, you know? Was it around the six, seven, eight? <laughs> that's funny that's funny that's funny the uh yeah after a guy though uh excuse me when a female has an orgasm the guy's testosterone also boosts up as well for sure it's like a i feel better uh, yes. I, I did something good yeah what's up feel, i can go feel, again you feel, you feel like the man of the world that ego boost goes out the roof you walk around your chest is nice and nice and out <laughs> <laughs> i mean when uh, a lot of studies have been done, when a guy takes it into his own hands, his testosterone does not go up. When a guy is actually with a woman and she orgasms, his testosterone levels go up. It's the whole idea of dominance. I'm a guy. I just dominated. I brought it. Please, this girl. Yeah. The, on, uh, the animal instinct. It truly is. It, it truly is. Now, the caveat, when a guy goes... Yay. Testosterone goes down for a week. Wait, 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 wait. Explain that? Yep. So when a guy actually orgasms, unlike a woman where the woman orgasms, guy's testosterone goes up. When a guy actually orgasms, his testosterone level goes go down for a week. So. So hold on. Uh, <laughs> hold up. So I have questions now, right? I'm so, sure. So, you know, during this quarantine, right, you know, mm -hmm. um, a lot of our single men have been home and um, have been masturbating at a much more higher rate than usual, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, there was, there was a point where I had to tell myself, like, bro, you need to chill out. Um, <laughs> you know, does – and okay, so here, here's, here's, the, here's the first street trick, right? So, you know, there's been a lot of uh, – guys who would masturbate before encountering with the girls so that yep. they could last longer. So yes, now, so my question to you is, does that work? Because if you're telling me that my testosterone goes down mm -hmm. after I ejaculate, 
you know, wouldn't that make it harder for me to want to get up to last longer just because my testosterone level is not the same? Absolutely. A guy goes before he meets up with a girl. Chances of him getting is erect and having that true animalistic nature in him, it's going to be diminished. He's not going to be able to be at his 100% best. May he last longer? Perhaps. Is he going to get as hard? Not every guy. It's really not. Is he going to have a better chance of poor performance if he does? Yup. So best With thing. With the gamble. Actually, yeah. Best thing for a guy to actually do in this case would be, you know what? When you're with her, get it out of the way and just keep on going. Uh, I guess it so. really is. Spend some, you're about to go, back off, spend some time on her for a while. She starts to orgasm, your testosterone goes up. She's a happy girl. You're a smart man, man. Jim, Men's you're a smart man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, <laughs> so the whole idea of energy conservation comes into play here because now if the testosterone goes down for seven days. We're trying to rebuild our testosterone levels during that time. So through diet, nutrition, rest, our testosterone levels will go up. Um, after sex, you know, males' estrogen levels goes up, testosterone levels go down. That's the refractory period where guys sometimes need that like 20 minutes in between and then can get going again. But if a guy will, a guy will typically retreat. So when girls get pissed off at guys because he acts like an a-hole, he's just a dickhead afterward. He, he doesn't leaves. even know what he's doing. He's just pushing her away because he needs that energy to recuperate. Now, recover. another interesting question here. Go for so, it. Biologically speaking, mm -hmm. is it understood when a guy um, has sex with a girl and wants to leave because the testosterone level is no longer there because he already ejaculated? You think a girl really knows that? I mean, no, I, I, well, most, you know. guys, most guys don't know that, so a girl's definitely not going to know that. <laughs> no, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, interesting enough, guys who are monogamous typically have lower testosterone levels than guys who are not. So guys that are married. Jim, 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 you're going through some interesting waters here. So what you're telling me is, what you're telling me is, okay, look, then I'm going to have a few questions about this now, right? Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is that, you know, Men who are monogamous, who are in one relationship, who are dedicated to one person, have a lower level of testosterone, unlike those who are non-monogamous, have, uh, I guess, I guess they're much more uh, uh, creative and have much more selections yep. in their sexual partners. So here's the question. Is it true that women would enjoy the, um, the side piece? more than they enjoy the main piece women yes women i'm right. saying, i'm speaking women right because obviously from based off what you're saying right the, the main piece is not going to have the same testosterone level yep. as the side piece right so i just a question now right no, no. you know is she gonna enjoy the side piece more just because he has a higher testosterone level theoretically speaking remember the woman wants to feel safe mm. and secure and cared for Mm, so a side piece may not necessarily be that. Now, if a guy is attentive to her and he doesn't just say, screw you, I need to recover for a week, then the woman is going to most likely enjoy that main guy, not mm. the side piece so much. A lot of times we would feel guilty about it. Yes, I am totally aware. Guys uh, don't really care <laughs> for the most part. I mean, not, yeah, there is not, some guilt on guys, but a lot of guys are like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> now, here's the caveat. Guy wants to be monogamous. Guy wants high testosterone levels. And here's a couple studies. It takes seven days, but a guy can also, and this is where sports come in too, between 28 and 30 days can actually reach peak, peak testosterone performance. So the whole idea about a fighter can't have sex before a fight, an athlete in any other sport shouldn't have sex before a game. If they do this right, now, guy can have sex every single day. Go ahead, have sex for 30 days straight, but don't orgasm. I know, that's tough to do, right? 
Jim, the, I mean, to, I'm going to be honest with you. What's, what's the point? Like, <laughs> you, yo, you want the timing thing here? I'm listen, giving you the, the, the yeah, nitty-gritty here how to make it work. Listen, Here's like, the biohacks. So, you know, I think a lot of us have, um, you know, seen these, uh, these, maybe these, these boxing movies where, you know, they tell the boxer, like, hey, listen, you cannot have sex until after the fight, right? right? Um, because you need to build up the testosterone level. Mm -hmm. um, now, so what you're saying is that you could involve in the act as long as you don't ejaculate. Correct. Now, the funky yeah. part is the old yeah. school boxers and the old school trainers, so all they say is it'll make your legs weak, right? Well, That's all well, they ever said. Well, you do feel a bit like a relief, you know, in your knees. So I would, I would, I would, that, I always believed it. So can, can you, is that right or is that wrong? I've never been able to find anything about the legs weakness stuff. I, I just know testosterone, energy, sharpness, quickness, <laughs> all that stuff. But ideally, if you're going to have a fight, 30 days beforehand, no orgasms. Have sex every single day. Dominate your woman. Be the man. Be the alpha. Just don't orgasm. Have her orgasm multiple times a day, as much as you can. Here's the little extra boost to your own testosterone. Then on that 30th day after your fight, if your face isn't all mangled, <laughs> now's your chance. Your test is going to be at the best. That, that's a rough one. That's a rough one. I know. I know. It, it's rough, but this is just human physiology 101. I mean, we can make it work or with us, or we can just say, screw it. You know, that, that's so much of what I do is making sure people achieve higher levels than they ever thought possible before. And this is one of those things, you know, there are sacrifices that, hey, at least you're with a girl. I mean, that, that's a plus. That, right? That's about the point. <laughs> so you get your optimal orgasm every 30 days. It, it really comes down to. You're going to rebuild the testosterone after a week to get back to where you were, but optimal, optimal, optimal is 30 days. And you can optimize it with doing some high-intensity interval training. Not long, slow cardio, not running miles and miles and miles, not beating yourself for hours and hours and hours. In, out, let your body recover. Go hardcore again, let your body recover. Call it a day. Testosterone levels will go up. So, uh, Jim, I have a question, right? So, um, I used to run track when I was in college. Um, huh? And um, now, you know, I'm trying to get back into the routine of running. You know, you, you know, what, what, for testosterone level purposes, right? What would mm -hmm. be the, the, the most adequate running? Um, sprints or yep. distance running? Sprints, all day long, sprints, it's not even close. Really? Yep. I mean, if you're going to do a distance run, you know, cap it at anywhere between three and five miles once a week. Other than that, hit off the interval sprints. Interesting, interesting. Muy interesante. Another big one to boost testosterone and timing here is uh, increase your fat intake. Yup, fat makes you skinny, and fat, your, all your hormones are made from fat. So if you're trying to rebuild, you need fat in order to rebuild those hormones. Whenever people go on those you know, low-fat diets, their hormones come crashing down. They don't act right anymore. Things are wrong they can't even explain, and that's just because their bodies can't produce the hormones anymore. You need the fat to rebuild all day long. Interesting. I know, different coming from a track runner like yourself who probably carved up. To oh, get so, so like, yes, yeah, so for us, it would be that, you know, the, the day before the race or the night before the race, um, you know, we would eat carbs because, you know, it was kind of like to get the energy so that we would have to, you know, all, you know, throw it all out on the next day. Yep. Um, so when you tell me fat, I'm just kind of like, wait, why would I, you know, why am I taking fat and not like, now, have you seen now how a lot of ultra marathoners have turned into a totally ketogenic diet? Yes, and, I've seen that a lot. Yep. That way they're not burning through those carbs and they have that long, slow, sustained energy throughout the entire race. A lot different than a 100-meter sprinter, though. I mean, they just need to burn some pure maple syrup and... Good to go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obviously, decrease sugar. I mean, sugar is going to kill your testosterone levels. And then... Uh, you know, like I said before, less frequent orgasms. I know that's the thing. How many can we have a day? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, now, Jim, you know, can someone perform um, most of these and not uh, and not have the proper testosterone level just because they missed one, 
or they need to complete like all of these steps? Um, best thing to do, I mean, it's a subjective type question on that one. Best thing for guys, get your testosterone checked. It's really easy to do. Well, you can get you your testosterone cup. checked? Yeah, you pee into a cup. You can either do a blood test or you pee into a cup for 24 hours. Just go, fill it, you know, keep on refilling a bucket. Put a uh, FedEx label on it and the lab will tell you in a, a week or two what your testosterone levels are. We do that a lot, a lot, of, a lot, a lot of here. Now, yeah, wait, well, this is the first time, this is the first time that I ever hear you get your testosterone level checked. Um, well, I mean, I would assume that you, there was a way to do it. I just didn't think it was like something that was properly done. Um, now, what, out of all of them, which one do you think is the most important one? Of, uh, on how to boost your testosterone? Yes. I'm going to say in that case here, it's going to be, uh, I'm going to say it's going to be high intensity training. High intensity training. Yep. Not too much, not too little, just enough because psychologically, what are we doing when we're having sex? In a way we're competing, aren't we? Yeah. So, it's, a, it's a competition of, you know, of, uh, dedication, animal instinct. Uh, it is. It, it, I mean, even guys like, here's sounds crazy here but if they know a girl is not exclusive to him subconsciously even though we don't want to get the girl pregnant it's still a survival of the fittest we want our sperm to outdo anybody else that's been with her so yes. it really is this animal thing so when we are exercising like that again it's that sprint it's that it's almost like training for sex in a way you want to make sure that you leave that stamp when you want to win a race or you want to win a competition. Exactly. Perfect. Absolutely. I mean, then secondly, obviously, it's got to be diet. Eat like crap. You're going to look like crap. You're going to feel like crap. You're going to kill all your hormones. Eat great. Eat mixed and grass-fed beef. Um, get plenty of good fats in you. Have proper of dark greens and uh, colorful vegetables. Really mix it up good. Um, nuts to make sure you get your zinc levels up, selenium levels up to really boost testosterone, then uh, at least nutritionally, you're going to be sound as well. So put those two things together, and the next thing to do would be to actually find a girl that wants to uh, mate with you. That's the most important part. At the end of the day, <laughs> yeah. well, you have the highest that, testosterone that, level in the world. That's a, that super, <laughs> that's a super <laughs> important part. We want to make sure that we find that person who we want to, who's, who's, who's going to accept us and let us exactly. perform for them. Um, Jim, you, exactly. got, you got more? That's really it. I mean, yeah, uh, that, that's, that's really it here. I mean, we already talked about, you know, porn, not porn, taking things in your own hands here. Um, you know, releases dopamine, decreases energy, the real thing all day long so, is going to increase. Last question, um, Jim, yep. right? So, you know, you brought up a lot of important points, right? Um, but I want to ask you a question. Um, if someone is, you know, like you said before, you know, before we usually mate, right. We usually find ourselves in this alcohol driven, this, uh, <laughs> smoke. And, and in my case, right. So I smoke a lot of hookah. I'm not sure what you know what hookah is. Oh yeah, um, of course. so, so I, yeah, I smoke a lot of hookah. Right. So, um, do these combinations hurt your performance? Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Quantity. How much alcohol are we consuming? How much are we smoking? How tired are we? How late are we out? Long term? Yeah, you're doing it regularly? It's going to take yeah, it down. Yeah. It, it, at first, a young guy like yourself, you're not going to notice Jack's squat. Yeah, I'm, I'm in my, th I, just, I just turned 30. I just turned 30. Congratulations. <laughs> you get a decade of fun now. <laughs> you're more mature. <laughs> But yeah, long term, by the time you're 35, you're probably going to start noticing that you don't like feeling that way when you wake up in the morning anymore. Your, your manhood is not uh, working like it used to anymore. But, uh, you know, sporadically, you know, go out, have some fun. Sporadically, you're going to be good. It's all well, that lifestyle. Uh, Jim, I, yeah, I, don't, I don't think you understand what you just have done to the community that listens to this podcast. Um, <laughs> you, 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 you have just put us in a very tough situation because we are very um, alcohol-consuming community. Uh, we, <laughs> we, we love our hookah. Um, but now that we know that this performance, uh, this affects our performance, I think we are now going to think about it twice 
Um, it, it, it comes down to what's your end goal? What do you want for yourself long term? And most of us, we don't think twice about it going through stuff until something ends up going wrong, something we're not happy, then it's like, oh, what the crap? What's going on now? And, you know, the last 10, 20 years of what we've been doing finally caught up. So, you know, I, I know the idea of not going at the end of the day is going to suck, but if you've got a mate that's going to be with you every single day, well, what's the big deal? I mean, I knew a guy that decided he's going to be like a monk and not have sex for an entire year. I don't know how, if his wife is still with him at this point, but uh, <laughs> that's I'm, taking things to extremes. Yeah, I'm good. I'm going I'm to pass on that monk. Yeah, me too. That. I, that's I'm going to pass on that one. I'm going to pass on that one. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, Jim Getz, uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for uh, providing us with um, all of this information. Uh, I'm going to like, sit down and re, uh, re rehear this and make sure, you know, I, I'm going to jot down everything I got to jot down so that we got the right information out there. Um, I promise you, everything I've said is highly, highly, highly researched. So it's not just my opinion. It, this is here's the facts of the body. Um, now, Jim, do you have like any books coming out? Do you have any website where we can read to social medias? Um, sure. Maybe somebody uh, is scared to ask me a question. Maybe they want to go ask you directly a question. So right now I'm actually producing a movie called a The movie? Keto Project. Okay. So I got a buddy of mine I went to chiropractor school with. I love him to death. He will do literally anything I ask. So I said, for 30 days, will you eat just the patty from Burger King? We actually did a double blind study to figure out which actual fast food restaurant he's going to go to. So we're going to turn him a state of ketosis. We've done every lab test going. We're going to see what happens. Then we're going to do end grass fed beef, and we're going to see what happens there too. So we've just drawn blood, poop, <laughs> urine, your brain scans on him. And I'm expecting in uh, probably about year and a half from now it'll probably be out um hopefully be on streaming netflix and uh it, it's actually been a lot of fun it's gonna be very entertaining that's what's <sighs> up that's what's up um and your socials yeah everything's at functionized instagram facebook is all at functionized f-u-n-c-t-i-o-n-i-s-e-d and we're www.functionized.com you can uh dm us uh email We've got a ton of place to email us and all that kind of stuff and uh just say uh put Jim in the subject line and it'll make its way to me and I will respond to absolutely 100% every single uh, email and direct message. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Jim Gats. Jim, Jim, thank you very much. This has been very informational. This has been a lot of fun. Good. <laughs> um, and th this, is, this is great. This is great.